She's co-owner and general manager of JR Motorsports, and she has authored the book Drive. She's Kelly Earnhardt Miller, and she joins us on the Goldberg New and Abraham Law Firm hotline, goldberg-law.com. Kelly, thanks so much for your time. Uh, how are you and your family uh, doing these days? Good morning. It's uh, great to be here. We are uh, hanging in there, just uh, trying to stay at home and stay healthy and uh you know, doing schoolwork with the kids, working from home, and in the middle of it all, trying to promote a new book. <laughs> <laughs> well, our first question is a standard one for every author that's come on our show for over a dozen years. Why? These things take a lot of time, <laughs> and they don't normally make a lot of money. So why author the book Drive? They do take a lot of time. I've been working on this book for 18 months, um, and uh you know, it stemmed from a conversation from Dale's uh, book publisher uh, for the book that he wrote uh, on his concussions, and uh, I really had never really thought about writing a book, and uh, I was, she asked me the question, what do you think about writing a book, or would you ever consider it? And I said, well, yeah, if I wrote a book, this is what I'd like to write it on, and uh, I spent a lot of years um, in therapy just trying to get myself together Um didn't feel like I had a great foundation from my childhood and whatnot. I made a lot of different mistakes throughout my young 20s. And so uh, I went through therapy, and I feel like this writing this book was kind of putting the seal on all of that and uh, just kind of finding my own happiness and finding that peace in Kelly instead of uh, kind of the, the family name and, and what goes along with that in the NASCAR world. So that's kind of how it came together. Uh, they paired me with a great writer who I spent an extensive amount of time with talking because I could have never put the actual words on paper myself, I don't think. Kelly, I heard a fantastic interview a while back with your brother and Dan Patrick in which he opened up about therapy, and I was riveted. So I, I have to kind of ask you, what when and what was it in therapy that helped you the most? What was the reason that drove or drew you to getting therapy? Because I think it's something that so many people are uncomfortable talking about, and you writing about it probably will influence more people to go seek out some therapy. So what was it that brought you to that conclusion? Yeah, therapy is definitely something that has a negative connotation. It means there's something wrong with you. And, in fact, the very first time, so, um, you know, just uh, uh, when we were growing up, we, were, it, we weren't allowed to ask questions, talk. In our household, you did what Dale Hart said, and you didn't ask any questions. Uh, you, it wasn't a conversation. You didn't have a voice. Um, and then the other aspect that I feel like Dale and I really missed out on was just kind of feeling like we were worthy of Dad's attention because um, his attention was, you know, pivoted in a lot of different directions and usually at the sacrifice of his family. And so um, I got started in therapy actually with one of my daughters who uh, I was divorced as well, um, remarried about nine years ago, and um, one of my daughters was having these OCD issues, and so and and started talking there and as the therapist was talking to the two of us she said you know kelly i don't know if you ever thought about you know going to therapy yourself but i think you might would find it beneficial and so i did the same and the first thing that i said to my therapist and in the very first meeting is i said i feel really stupid and awkward for being here there you know there's nothing wrong with me i haven't had this traumatic um you know i haven't been sexually abused i haven't been physically abused uh, I had, you know, all of the things I needed growing up. I had shelter. I had clothing. I had food, you know. I, and so I questioned why I'm here. And she said, you know, you can't look at it like that. There are so many traumatic events in people's lives that they don't even realize are traumatic. And that experience for, for what I believe Dale and I went through of not feeling worthy and not having a voice created you know, trauma. Um, it created mental and emotional trauma within us. And so um, I think it's really important. Um, and uh, I've I just gained, I, I learned to um, just take care of myself and, and get and put all that stuff behind me. You hang on to that baggage uh, through life. And so it was, it was a process where I could put all that behind me and not uh, lean into that anymore. So it, I love therapy. <laughs> Kelly Earnhardt Miller. The book is Drive, co-owner, general manager of JR Motorsports. Uh, when your father died in that wreck a little over 19 years ago, did you think about maybe walking away from the sport? 
You know, I didn't. Um, uh, we were, you know, right back at it that very next weekend. And uh, we were in the, for me, I was working uh, in, the, in the souvenir business at the time uh, when he passed. And so we ran the trackside trailers that carry all the merchandise to the to the speedways to sell to the fans. And um, uh, so, so I was kind of in that part of the business, not the actual racing or anything. But my dad always told me, he said, if, I, if there's something happens to me in the race car, you guys, I was happy doing what I loved, doing what I wanted to do from the eighth grade up. And, uh, and so I always, you know, took peace in that and, and knowing that, uh, you know, as long as he was living out the life that he wanted to live, that, uh, that that was okay. So I really, I didn't give it any thought to, uh, to, you know, getting out or, or not doing anything. In fact, six months later, I called Dale and said, Hey, I need to come work for you. And uh, that's what started all this. Well, and and obviously it's not just Blossom. It's the big. You know, it's the biggest name in the sport. It's the biggest merchandise in the sport. But when you talked about looking for your father's attention and in therapy, and then working in this business, it seems to me that that is a strange mix. Was it something that there was no other path work wise? That this was the only thing there? Because as you described some of the things growing up it would seem to me that you would run away from racing and yet you're right smack dab in the middle of it. Well, I think that um, any time that you're trying to find attention and please someone, there's no better way to do it to try to do it in something they love, right? And so, you know, being involved in the family business, so to speak, of racing, not not necessarily at Dillon Horn Incorporated because I didn't work there, but you know, doing something within the business that he put so much attention to, hopefully you would garner some of that attention uh, to the other side. And um, there's no doubt in my life my dad was, like, extremely proud of us, loved us to pieces, um, you know, and, and at the time that he passed away, we were starting. I, I feel like he was really – I have a 16-year-old – I have a younger sister that's 16 years old, younger than me, and I I really believe the relationship that he had with her, you know, showed him what being a father was like, and I feel like we were turning that corner in terms of all of our relationships, and we just didn't get the chance to kind of fulfill that out, but, you know, I, I think when you're just looking for attention and pleasing somebody, it's natural that you do it, you know, within something that they love. Uh, Kelly, we could talk to you for a very long time, but we know that no. you have a very short windows. Uh, maybe we can do this again. Uh, all the best with your book, Drive, and uh, hopefully we can talk again. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Co-owner and general manager of JR Motorsports, Kelly Earnhardt Miller. The book is Drive.